Uh, Bitcoin's Lightning Network is just the payment layer. It's the it's the scalability layer. Of Does someone Bitcoin. own that? How does that work? It is created through basically we're still using the Bitcoin network for it, but instead of processing transactions, we're creating a channel where two wallets can sign. It costs no gas. There's no transaction that's happening on a signature of a transaction. You only pay when you process a transaction. The miners will pick it up and it'll go into the next block when you process a transaction. So the Lightning Network is basically the payment layer. So like if I'm a person who drinks coffee every day, which I am, and I go to your coffee shop every day, you know, we have a relationship. We exist in this world with a monetary relationship. So instead of us processing every single transaction on the main chain, we just keep a tab. We just keep a tab rolling and it's it's a secure tab because a signature is is basically I am saying this is true and it's verified and it's just a signature. There's no processing required. And then when it's like, all right, dude, you know, let's settle up. We settle up and we process on the on the network. And when you do that in a large form with many, many participants, you turn thousands of transactions into one. Are you, would you be paying in Bitcoin or could that Bitcoin be converted into like a stable coin and then we're paying in that? Currently on the Lightning Network, those types of things are being developed. Um, there because are, for example, I don't want to pay in Bitcoin. I want to hold. Sure. I want to maybe take a percentage of my Bitcoin capital and convert it into a stable coin on that network and I want to play, pay you pay with that. It doesn't exist right now, but I think it's coming. And uh, I'm kind of glad that things are going a little bit slower with uh, with Bitcoin and Lightning in regards to stable coins because we don't really have a trusted stable coin. Um, so it would be better, you know, for those individuals that do want to choose their local currency, um, they should have the right to do so. We just need to figure out a way to fully back their currency. Basically, we need central banks to come online. We need central banks to start using Bitcoin, the network, for that to be... Um, feasible and it doesn't really exist right now there are ways that you can move stable coins around but you shouldn't be surprised if the stable coin unwinds i mean we just saw what happened to luna yeah um, that's what scares the shit out of me like I'll, everyone and i'll talk about that quick i'll come back to this um you get those positions and you you know it was say it was 69k bitcoin you're like okay great position convert it swap it all into uh you know on the DeFi through paying uh uni swap and let's swap this all to tether well, what the fuck happens when Tether on pegs and now you have zero dollars like what happened to Luna? So the stable coins, that, that, that strategy, for me, I wouldn't do because now I'm a bit you know, scared. What are those stable coins pegged to? Um, do, do you follow that thought process? Because, again, I've talked to people before where basically their strategy was, okay, when I feel I'm close to the all-time high or my position's good to get out, I get out, I convert it to a stable coin and I stake it and I make interest and I come back into the market when it's time to make that move. That was the idea. And I, <laughs> I, don't, I think that idea is out the window yeah. now, right? Yeah. Um, and this is just another testament to how early we are in this development of this technology is, uh, you know, we're really, you know, throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what's going to stick. And we are not the Fed. We should not have the money printer. And when you have stable coins, we have the money printer. They're going to squash that. They're going to regulate that. And it's going to be good. You know, uh, it, there's two kind of thought processes there. There's the hardcore Bitcoin maximalists that don't really want central bank digital currencies to enter into the ecosystem because it's going to, you know, significantly reduce the amount of privacy that we have. Um, and then there's the other camp that wants to trade the perceived value so that when Bitcoin becomes overbought, they have a safe haven. They have somewhere to go. And when it becomes oversold, they can redeploy. But, you know, the trade off to that is you will be tracked, your wallets will be known, and you will have to pay taxes. Um, so there's pros and cons to both. But as it stands right now, we're printing funny money and we call them USDC. We call it Tether. We call it die, But it's just it's yeah. bullshit. And uh, it will be regulated. How that ends up going down, I'm not going to sit here and speculate on how that goes down. But I do think that central bank digital currencies will get into the Bitcoin network. And uh, we will, that'll probably spark off the next bull run. 